Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. The year of the stencil continues today here on my YouTube channel. I've got a fun way to take a stencil and do a little, do a little more with it. Well, not, it's not, it's nothing that fancy, but if you've got a pair of scissors and a big image on your stencil, I think you'll have fun. I could be wrong. My fussy cut stencil project is coming up next. So here's a look at the products I'll be using for today's card. And this is a stencil that I have been wanting to use for quite a while now. And today's the day. I love it. I think stencils are amazing, right? It's the hashtag year of the stencil for me, which I keep forgetting to say every time I use a stencil. But I have a fun idea for this today that I'm excited to share. I'm gonna do some ink blending and I've got a rainbow of Simon Says Stamp inks, right? Just a good, Roy G, well, let's get in order here. Just, you know, just a classic rainbow, right? I'm gonna blend, it's gonna be beautiful. Everyone is gonna be happy. Well, I can't back that up. For my greeting on the card, I'm gonna use this hugs die, which I designed for Simon's stamp. And I don't think I'm gonna use the shadow, but what I am gonna do today is do a little ink blending, and then I'm going to fussy cut this for my card. I think it'll be fun. And because I'm fussy cutting, I'm going to be ink blending onto a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 80 pound. Because the 80 pound is just a little bit easier to cut. And for cutting, I'll just have my Cutter B scissors. So those are the basics. Let's get set up for ink blending. This is a new tool for me. This is the Make Art Station, or I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I'll have it, I'll have it linked below. Wendy Vecchi. Someone told me it's a hard C, so there you go. This is pretty cool. This is only the second time I have used this little, this little friend, but someone had recommended it to me as, as a way to hold things down when I ink blend. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. So I did go ahead and I ordered it. And so far, I think it's pretty cool because these magnets really do hold whatever you're doing in place. And I actually decided who, here's another little fun tip. I took a magnet from one of my Misty's popped it right in the or right in the center. That thing is even harder. Like it's it's uh yeah, this has got it's got some heft to it. I'm going to get started with some ink blending just in rainbow order. Let's see here. I think I'm going to turn it cuz I want to start want to start this way. That's the other thing I like about this thing. You can just, you know, you can move it as needed. You know, nothing's glued down into place and for me that's pretty critical. I have my blender brushes here from Picket Fence Studio. These are the ones that I tend to use with my Simon ink. I try to keep my brushes uh, kind of separate for each line of ink that I use. I have a lot of brushes, so it's not, it's not a, it's not a hardship. But here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna ink blend a rainbow of color around this floral wreath. I'm not worried about realism, right? And making things actually look like, oh, that's a, that's a flower and those leaves are green. Nope, we're going for hyper-realism here. Well, not hyper-realism. We're going for rainbow realism, all right? So all I'm gonna do is take each color, right? Load that up a little, tap it off so it's not too hard in there. Maybe, I'll maybe deepen it in the center here. And then just overlap gently into each little area of the stencil. Now, if I go outside of the stencil, no big deal because I am going to cut this out. I know, fussy cutting, who knew? I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. All right, I think this is nice. Got a nice little bit here, blending in. Oh, look at that. Also, I recently cleaned all my brushes. I use this wonderful brush cleaner called the Masters, which I will be sure to link below because it's a really awesome uh, brush cleaner. If your brushes start to get goopy, once you wash them with the brush cleaner and let them dry, oh, they get so soft and wonderful. And I, I had to wash these brushes because I had used them with another ink and then crossed over and then it started to get really mucky. We don't want, we don't want the mucky. All right, let's bring in the next color. This is Rosy Cheeks, all right? It's a nice pink. One thing I like about rainbow ink blending is it's hard to mess it up when you're using a stencil. The stencil just gives you, you know, the framework in which to place your ink, right? And that's, that's always a nice thing. You, you don't have to be fancy and you don't have to know like about shading or getting a little, just, just blend, just go through the stencil. 
And I, well, that's what I'm doing. I think I want to go into melon. I'm going to go into melon and I'm going to grab my orange brush. I also have these clips, if you're wondering what those are, on my brushes. I actually use these on almost every blending brush that I have, but it's especially helpful on these black handled brushes because it just shows you at a quick glance, oh, these are the ones I use with orange, for example. So that is why I have them on. All right, blending in my orange. Kind of overlap the color you did before too. That's kind of fun, right? Just kind of get that little overlap. And then I'm going to move into two shades of yellow, really. I like to go, this is duckling, and it's a, it's, it's a orangey yellow, I guess. So I'm going to start with my yellow brush. Again, load up my brush. Tap you off a little and bring you in. And then I'll go into a true yellow. I like this one because it's kind of orangey. And we're just going to do a little like that. Next, we bring in golden locks, which I have these little, I do the Jennifer, well, I don't know if you can tell the color. I do the Jennifer McGuire method for organizing because if Jennifer says this is a great way to show your color outside your pad, I'm going to do it. And that's that's what I have. See, this is a, this is a lighter yellow. And you can see that right there. All right, I'm gonna just kind of go like that. And kind of, I kind of overdid, overshot my rainbow. Maybe I went too far. Well, we'll see. Oh, and I have a purple too. For those of you who know, sometimes I forget about the magic of purple. I promise you, I got one. I'm gonna squeeze it in here at the end, I promise. I just forgot to show it in the beginning. So we're gonna just do this nice jelly bean color right here. Overlap a little bit too to get that transition area, All right? Isn't that pretty? We're going to get our blue. This is Audrey blue, another pretty color from Simon Says Stamp. Oh no, it's looking good there. There we go. It's a pretty color, bright but yet soft at the same time. And as you can see here, I'm making room for purple. I actually did a video recently and I'll pop a card up for that where I just wanted everyone to know that I don't hate purple. And I, uh, I, I used purples. Well, I did use a pink in there too, but you, you can forgive me for that. All right, the, the purple that I'm going to use today is hydrangea. I didn't show that in the beginning because it was tucked under my computer, but here it is. So we'll just load it up, All right? Tap a little off. And I love the, the way that blue goes into purple and then the way it hits the the pinky red up here, the hot lips color. It just gets that cool sort of blend. It's a perfect, it's a perfect way to close up your rainbow, probably far better than stopping it blue. So I'm glad I remembered some purple today. Now, once you have this done, right, you kind of take a look and say, okay, are there areas that I should overlap a little more? I would like to bump up my melon just a little bit, have a little more orange in there, just for a little more contrast here. We'll just come right in here like that and just bump that up a little. See that? It's just kind of bringing it up a little. Just like that. All right. This off and we will lift and reveal. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? Just simple, right? This is not, you know, I'm not inventing anything new here. So let's, I'm going to go actually wash this off really quick. And then I'll come back here and we are going to cut this out. So we're going to cut this out. Okay. That's what we're going to do. And I'm gonna tell you a little story about fussy cutting. I like to kind of trim it in a little first before I get going. Just, you know, take the big scissors, make my work a little easier here. This is <laughs> this is not my version of fussy cutting. Can you imagine? All right, we're done. No, we're not done. But fussy cutting is not something I really even remotely considered uh, before I started card making. All the years I had been a scrapbooker, uh, never, never fussy cut a thing. And honestly, it's not horribly hard to do. Now, here's what you do. Turn your paper more than you turn your scissors. Does that make sense? Right? You just kind of bring the paper and just sort of, you know, if, if you're not perfect, it's not a big deal, right? This is just to create 
a little outline around your piece. And sometimes I do just go off like that because I, I need to have, I need, I need a fresh start. Coming on in here. It's very hard for me to talk and do this at the same time, I'll be honest. That's why sometimes I do videos where I just film clips, right? And then I add the voiceover after the fact when I have my wits about me. So I guess right now <laughs> you could say I don't really have my wits about me, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna come in here. Wait, let's try to curve the paper. All right, and then turn the paper. Sharp scissors are a must, and these ones are great. I've had these since I started making cards. Let's get you a little closer in there. Back in 2017, and they have stayed nice and sharp. And I love them. Now that's a, that's a little janky right there, but I'll show you. I'll show you a fun way to kind of fix the jankiness that you do. This is not perfect. I have watched people fussy cut and they're almost like a <laughs> electronic die cut machine. They're so good. That is not me. That is not me, but that's okay. Like I said, cause we're gonna, we're gonna make it work and it's gonna be just lovely for our card project today. Gotta whisper when you're concentrating. I'm gonna, I gotta go off. I gotta go off there. All right. I know, I have to go off, not gotta go off. Sometimes when you're fussy cutting, your English grammar can go out the window. Oh, we're getting a little janky. Janky, janky. Come on, calf. Don't, you're in the home stretch. Can I, can I, one, oh, okay. So look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Now I wanna show you my tip. This is where you will find the beauty of the Teflon bone folder. Cause what you can do here is you can just press this kind of rounded part over the edges of the places that you cut to kind of smooth it out. This will work on any fussy cut thing. I always go, I kind of flip it over, right? And just start pushing because then it will kind of flatten those little areas out and it just makes it nicer and flatter and gives you this beautiful finished edge. Simple, simple, simple. And of course, and you can even do that. The Teflon just slides right over your cardstock. Right, nothing sticky, no residue left behind. Let's see here. And let's pick that up. And it just creates a nicer finish. All right, so let's move on. And we're gonna start with creating a card base for this card project. We are just going to do the classic USA2. So this will be a top folding card. Okay like that okay so that's that's my basic card so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pop this up on top of this card base and i'm going to grab some of this foam tape i have this new foam tape that i've been using from scrapbook adhesives and i'm just going to flip this over just to serve as kind of a guide it's a very sticky tape keep that up at the top like that oh it's very sticky in there to kind of support that side right up here like that okay all right it's very sticky i want to make sure that i don't do anything wonky here but i'm going to just position this over the top and i'm just going to let's see did that look good press all right so i've got this here Wish me luck, because every time I try to do things like this, I tend to I tend to muck it up. So we're gonna we're gonna press this all the way to the edge, right? Hold this down, cut. I gotta be firm with it, so don't don't be afraid by the cut. Beautiful. Oh, this is working out. This is working out. Hold it down and cut. Now I have this wonderful panel, right? It's got a little bit of depth that's popped up there on the front of my card base. And now I just need to 
come up with a greeting. All right, I wanna show you something that happened. Um, can you see that? I got a little <laughs> too close to the fold. So just to smooth it out, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my mono sand eraser like that, and then I'm gonna take my bone folder and kind of just press it to smooth it a little. But we're gonna keep going. We're gonna salvage, because I still think this is gonna turn out cute but we gotta shave it off. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, we have <laughs> we have salvaged, see that? Oh, you almost don't even notice that I mucked it up. Okay, moving on to the greeting. I have three hugs and I'm gonna go ahead and just use my spray glue off camera, right? I, I keep a little box uh, at my feet and I'm gonna spray some so I can glue these all together. All right, so all I'm gonna do here is line up one, Pick it up, kind of wiggle it into place quickly. There we go. Hey, I'm getting good at that. Stay there and just like, let's go, let's go this way. Should we go reverse on it? Cluck. Clucking helps. Okay, that actually looks great. We're lined up. Blocks that I want to press down. I have a little one, so let's do that. Just press, press. Oh, get you lined up again. You look a little wonky there. Come on. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I want to pop this hugs right smack dab, right? The white on white, totally fine. But what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna use my connect glue. Let's make sure it's flowing. There we go, we're flowing, okay? And let's do this with the liquid glue. Just little tiny, let's see if I can get that going, there we go. I do tend to clock a lot. Little dabble do ya. Let's pop you right. I want to kind of preserve the side to side spacing and I want this to be centered in the panel. And actually, I will grab this just to make sure that the baselines are lined up like that. See that? Okay, that looks good. And press. And I do really like just that subtle effect of the white on white. I love how the stencil is bursting out of its confined, constrained space, right? That's kind of a cool thing. Now, let's get some shiny things. All right, pop some in there to get a variety of size. I'm going to get my crystal katana here. And then let's just sort of, you know, just sort of place some around. Now I want at least one big one. I want at least uh, one medium sized one, and then I want at least one tiny one like that. Okay. So it also kind of, you know, fills in that space a little bit like that. All right. And then I'm going to take another medium one up here and one more small one up here. You know, going with that, you know, five, five is a magic number, right? Because it's, well, it's an odd number. And that's pretty, right? I don't need to fill in all the white space. I don't really feel, well, but do I want to go? That, no, no, it's fine. I'd rather have, get off my finger there, cute little guy. I'd rather have a visual line that leads you in a diagonal. Does that make sense? Well, may the gods of the boop be ready to go, I hope. Let's go. And. love this tool. It really does work. Boop. It's not, well, it might be the boop too, but let's give the last one in here. Like that. Boop. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I love how this turned out. All right. And that is my finished card project. So taking the stencil, right? Any stencil you have, whatever that pattern is, cut it out, trim it down onto your card, and then, you know, Get another use out of that stencil in a fun way that adds dimension and really makes it come alive. I love how it turned out. I really do. Anyway, I hope this inspires you to look at the stencils you have, stencil some things on, grab those scissors, and cut them out. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. 
Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.